Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. Today we're going to discuss multiple myeloma and we're very fortunate to be with Dr. Judy Ratson. She's the Associate Professor of Medicine at University of Miami and one of my favorite physicians and friends. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Fine. Dr. Ratson, what is multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma is a um, malignancy of uh, plasma cells, uh, which are uh, cells that are part of the hematopoietic or the blood system mm -hmm. um, that help normally in producing antibodies. In this disease that we call multiple myeloma, the plasma cells become malignant and all of the malignant cells generally will produce the same abnormal um, uh, immunoglobulin, which is an antibody. Um, we call it multiple myeloma mm -hmm. because essentially what it is it is multiple, ab multiple areas of bone marrow involvement mm -hmm. by these malignant cells. Mm -hmm. What are the stages of myeloma? Well, since this is a bone marrow disease, it generally is fairly spread out from the, at the time of initial diagnosis. But there are, uh, by international standards, three stages. Mm -hmm. and, and the stages are based on certain blood tests that can be performed. Um, one test is called um, the serum albumin, uh, which is, tests the amount of protein in the, um, in the blood, mm -hmm. um, or the amount of albumin protein in the blood. And normal people have generally somewhere around four uh, grams per cent. Um, the um, patients who are, this is used to divide into th um, stages. If you're stage one, you have 3.5, um, I think it's grams mm -hmm. per cent. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, what about stage three? The, the the, the, the other test that's used in staging is the beta-2 microglo mm -hmm, mi mm -hmm. beta microglobulin. And this is um, a protein that will generally be increased if there's evidence of renal failure, mm -hmm. um, but it also is a marker for uh, certain hematopoietic diseases. And so if you're stage one, you're less than 3.5. If you're stage mm -hmm. three, you're over 5.5. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're stage two, you're somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the albumin is really only important in stage one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the symptoms associated with myeloma? What kind of patient experience? Well, um, a lot of the symptoms depend on what we know is going on with the, these tumor cells. So um, the tumor cells tend to be in bone. Uh, bone marrow, various, and but not just in the marrow, but all along the, mm -hmm. the bones. It could be in the, the bones in the arm, the bones in the hips, mm -hmm. the bones in the legs, the skull. Uh, so they can cause pain mm -hmm. uh, in various bony areas. One of the most common um, findings is weakness of the bones, a condition called osteopenia. So you can get collapse mm -hmm. of vertebrae and shortening of mm -hmm. the um, of the um, body um, and and s deformities as mm -hmm. well from the osteopenia osteoporosis that can develop because the bone marrow is involved um, um, one may have anemia mm -hmm. uh, as normal bone marrow cells <coughs> are made there can be a decrease in some of the other um, blood elements mm -hmm. such as platelets or white cells as well um, the, the, another finding um, is maybe elevation of the serum calcium, mm -hmm. kidney disease, um, um, and because of the protein, depending on which type of protein is abnormal, one may get um, problems just related to the high amount of protein called, which ca may cause hyperviscosity in some mm -hmm, patients. Mm -hmm. And hyperviscosity is kind of like a thickening of the blood. Well, because of so much protein uh, in the blood. Mm -hmm. We often get asked this, is there an appropriate time to seek genetic counseling for patients or families when one is diagnosed with myeloma? I, I would say generally no. There's mm -hmm. a very small, small percent of patients with multiple myeloma, which is a common 
hema um, hematopoietic disease, and a small percent where it may be familial. So I think if you have the, a history that suggests that it's familial, you may want to do genetic um, counseling. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in general, I would say it's not it's not indicated. Okay. Let's take a step back. You know, assuming that a patient has had an elevated total protein and they go through the workup work and the bone marrow biopsy rules in multiple myeloma, what happens next? What are the next steps for that patient? Well, you, two th the two things that first you would see would be the elevated protein <coughs> and the bone marrow. So you make you make the diagnosis. Then you want to know you, you want to know the staging. So you get the additional blood studies that I talked about before, the beta-2 microglobulin and the serum albumin, but you also want to know the extent of bony involvement, mm -hmm. and so a series of bone x-rays, not bone scans, but bone x-rays would be indicated to see where in the bone there might be problems, whether there's anything that needs immediate ad addressing um, as far as the bony abnormalities uh, are concerned. Um, one also looks at studies like the the blood counts, mm -hmm. the hemoglobin, hematocrit, platelets, uh, to see what they are. And once you have all your information, then you make a determination how you're going to treat the patient. Mm -hmm. What about diet? Is there an association with diet and myeloma? Or should one's diet change? Not, none that I'm aware no. of. What about any infectious agents? Is there any association with myeloma? Well, it used to be thought that chronic infection infection or a chronic inflammatory state may mm -hmm. predispose to myeloma, mm -hmm. but it's, um, I, I don't know of any really strong data. What, should close family members be screened as well if one is diagnosed with multiple myeloma? Well, as I said before, you know, <coughs> if there's a history, if, one, if, if there's a history of siblings, and parents mm -hmm. having this disease and, and it shows up in a patient you're seeing, then you might want to do further screening and, and look into whether there's a genetic abnormality. But because the, the likelihood of there being a genetic abnormality is so small, mm -hmm. it's not really indicated to do so. I see. How do you prognosticate whether a myeloma is going to be very aggressive or whether it's going to be more indolent? Um, well, one can prognosticate based on doing um, gene, the, the gene testing of that particular tumor, mm -hmm. which is not saying that this is a hereditary genetic abnormality, but the abnormality that the tumor acquires. And you, when, when you do the bone marrow, you would send specimens for um, chromosome genetic and genetic studies, and there are certain um, markers, more or less, that will indicate that it's going to be a more aggressive disease than the more common type. I see. And you, you alluded to this earlier. Why is there oftentimes kidney damage in myeloma? Um, well, the kidney damage can be due to several different reasons, but um, in, in part due to the abnormal protein that's um, produced. It may be because of hypercalcemia causing some damage to the kidney. But it is, renal damage is not that uncommon mm -hmm. at all in, in multiple myeloma. That's some of the proteins can accumulate in the kidney. You also mentioned the thick blood, the hyperviscosity. What does that mean and what symptoms can be associated with that? Um, okay, so hyperviscosity, viscosity is something one can measure in liquid and when liquid gets thick, as the blood will get thick, mm -hmm, the viscosity mm -hmm. goes up and <coughs> certain immunoglobulins um, can cause this hyperviscosity. Um, now, there are, there are different groups of immunoglobulins mm -hmm. and, and one can have multiple myeloma more or less in any of these groups. Most of them are small, small enough proteins that they don't lead to increased mm -hmm. viscosity. But um, in, some, in, in some cases, if it's an IgA or if there are certain IgG type proteins that may um, come together mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. a way that will form a bigger mm -hmm, molecule, mm -hmm. it, there may be hyperviscosity. Most commonly, a disease that I consider related but not part of multiple myeloma, when there's an, 
what's called an IgM monoclonal protein, mm -hmm. most, more, m most often this is part of what's called Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, mm -hmm. and that's really a disease that acts more like a lymphoma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that protein, the IgM, is a very big protein and mm -hmm. can cause hyperviscosity. Mm -hmm. What about infections? Patients with myeloma oftentimes develop infections easier. Why is that? Well, although they have all this monoclonal protein, which is an immunoglobulin, it's really, they don't have, they lose the capacity to make other mm -hmm. normal immunoglobulins, and they lose the capacity, therefore, to respond well to um, common type of uh, bacterial mm -hmm. infections. Mm -hmm. And so they're not making that, those immunoglobulins, and so they get frequent bouts of pneumonia mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and other infections. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Raxon. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational. In the upcoming videos, we will discuss the management of multiple myeloma.